Good morning. It didn't rain. It didn't rain at all. Not here anyway. So we have another week of uh, sunny, dry weather. Warm but cooler than last week. The crops are going to start hurting though. We're going to go do some scouting here in a few minutes. We got Rylan with us. We had some errands to run Did this morning. And we got uh, Brock out here working on cleaning up some concrete. So Did you find the checking on him. Cleaning up our concrete, we had uh, a lot of stuff get settled in along this fence here. It's a, a lot from the um, dryer and stuff, so getting that cleaned up. We got our tank cleaned last week, cleaning off the fence here. It's some lichen, is that what we're calling it? Lichen? I don't know, it looked like moss, algae, something growing on stuff, so uh, just getting it all kind of cleaned up here since we've got some time. So we need to go and um, Decide how dry it is, kind of. And we need to look Can at I our get corn. get a big shovel. We got a shovel. And we need to look at our corn, see what growth stage we're at, if it's time for V5 fungicide or not. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna go look at some stuff and we'll talk about things. Yep. All right, well, we're gonna start close here. Is that camera all dirty? Better. Um, we're right behind the farm here, obviously. This is some of our very first planted corn. April 13th, I think, was right here. 12th up there. Like, this is... I should have planted harder. This stuff looks fantastic. And, yes, we're in the low ground. We're in a good spot here that's, you know, there's there's some water. It's down there. It's got to get to it. But it doesn't look bad right here. You can see our stand's not perfect. Especially, like, right there, we've got some missing. But most of this looks really good. And it's growing... Look at this. We've even got a sucker growing off of there. That's a good thing. So this is like a tiller. Um, those are a good thing. That means the plant is pretty happy. What, bud? This ground is loose. It is loose because it hasn't been rained on since we put anhydrous on here. Uh, you can see some anhydrous burn on these bottom leaves, or it could just be dry weather starting to burn them up a little bit. That's not great. But let's see... Um, one, four, five. This would be V5, I believe. This tiller makes it a little hard to tell. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, V5. Uh, this corn is ready to be sprayed. So, right now we've got some very critical things happening in this corn. Um, it is determining the number of rows around that's going to be on each ear. The fact that we are severely drought stressed, which is a strong word, but I would say we are severely drought stressed for this time of year, um, is not good. Not good on this card. Now, right here, it'll probably be okay. But, yeah. We could sure use some rain. Overall, it look really, really, really good. I'm happy with this. You can see this, this curl in this leaf. That is it trying to protect itself, um, trying to conserve some moisture. I don't see a ton of nutrient deficiency symptoms. Um, you know, the edges of our leaves aren't purple. We do have just a little bit of streaking on some of the very newest tissue. Could be a sulfur or a zinc thing. Um, but that's likely a dry weather where we just can't get it into the plant. For the most part, this looks really good. The, uh, thought of getting our irrigation stuff out was brought up this morning. Um, we're need to, we need to decide. We need to look at that. If we had a cornfield that could be irrigated, we would have been pumping water last week. Like, it would be no question we're doing it. We don't really have a cornfield along the river that we can easily irrigate. And so that leaves us with the decision of do we get the irrigation stuff out for soybeans. And what do you do with the big field again? I don't know. Generally, the um, best thing to do with irrigating soybeans is wait until August, and then you never stop. You just don't stop. Um, irrigating vegetative growth stage soybeans is usually not a, something that we do, or a great idea. And so we're very hesitant to do this, but in order to get to the reproductive stages, we have to have decent, viable plants. And if we get much drier, going to struggle to get there. So I don't know. We haven't decided. We need to go digging some soybean fields here today too. 
So this V5 corn that we're uh, looking at here now is also uh, where the growing point is now kind of above ground and exposed. A frost at this point would be devastating, uh, so highly unlikely. Um, but yeah, this is the size of corn that it takes to get the actual growing point of the corn above ground. Also where if we started driving over this corn, it's, it's not gonna come back from it. You know, the smaller stuff that we've been side dressing, um, most of that will grow back and maybe we'll look up here on the ends and I can show you where we drove on some of it and it is fine. Kinda nice having a chauffeur. All right, well now here's the other side of the coin, right? So this stuff was planted the same time. We're just farther back. Um, but we're on crappy soils here. This is the yellow clay knob that uh, doesn't it just dries out, doesn't hold the water, and you can see our corn spike rolled up. Looks terrible. It's much smaller. I mean, theoretically, this has had the same amount of heat and amount of time to grow. It just doesn't have the moisture to do it, and so it looks really tough. I'm gonna walk out here, get off the endros, because you never walk on endros. Although. I will say, um, since we're here, uh, yeah, you can kind of see where we turned with the anhydrous applicator here. There's the tire tracks and the plants that we ran over are all sprung back up and growing. Now, obviously they don't look very good here. They look like crap, but so does the entire endros. So, you know, that's kind of, there's the tractor tracks. This one here would have gotten totally smashed. It popped back up. Is it perfect? No, but it's going to be fine. And that's where we're not really doing any damage when we're side dressing small corn, or at least not a lot of damage. So as we walk out here, you know, does this corn look horrible? No, it doesn't look great. One, two, three, four. We're not quite to V5, so um, we're not don't have to spray yet. I like to kind of wait anyway to let the corn get a little bit bigger in canopy so that our, our fungicide isn't just hitting the dirt. It's not doing us any good hitting the dirt. Um, so sometimes I wait till V6 anyway. Today's Monday. I would say maybe Thursday or Friday we need to think about spraying this. <sighs> Boy, I wish we could get some rain. For as little rain as we had in May, the end of May, first week of June here, our crops don't look bad. They're not suffering tremendously yet, but there's also no rain in, in really in the 10 day, maybe on Sunday and Monday, a week out. All right, we're gonna look at this field. Uh, this one here is the field that we replanted. And um, we got some of the replant corn here. We've got some spots with some of the original good corn. We're gonna dig a little bit, take a look at both and see. You can see the, the replant corn is here. It's all up and it looks decent. I don't know. See our dead plants from when we sprayed it. That was a fairly effective way to keep our uh, emergence and, and everything at the same growth stage. Uh, we don't have a bunch of big plants next to small plants kind of thing. So that is good. Let's, uh, let's see what our roots look like and dig down and see how much moisture we've got down underneath. A lot of loose dirt yet from when we planted, replanted. Oh, it's very hard. Ugh. Well, we're getting a root system. I'm sure I broke some of those off. First nodal roots, radical root, seminal roots. Doesn't look bad. Nice and white and healthy. There's just not much down there. I mean, that, that's got a little moisture in it. I don't know how much the plant can get out of that. Hmm. Okay, now let's walk down here and dig up one of these bigger plants that we didn't kill off. We did burn this a little bit with our germoxone and lower leaves. It's grown out of it, looks pretty good. One, two, three, four, five, that's V5. I mean, that plant isn't bad looking. It's just that it was such a small area here that was actually good. <sighs> All right, I am destroying it, trying to get this out of here. Um, but look at this massive root here. 
I mean, just a huge amount of roots on this corn plant. That actually makes me feel really good. <sighs> Rylan's picking up rocks and yelling at me for not helping him. I gotta get this done first. I can't get this loose. Okay, we broke the majority of those off. But, nonetheless, we've got a really good root system developing. And that makes me feel good. Bunch of nodal roots coming out there. Like, So what dry weather does early in the growing season is force these plants to grow below ground to chase that moisture. And you can see there's, there's a little bit. We got down there, a bunch of roots in there. Um, it's not wet by any means, but it's not totally dry. Why our plants aren't all curled up and dead and wilty because they are still getting some moisture out of the ground. Um, but it is dry. We need some rain. So, yeah, that that in, that's encouraging. We need to go look at some soybeans. Soybeans. So this field here struggled to come up. They looked really tough for a long time. Um, but the stand actually is pretty decent out here. It's not perfect, but it's, there's plenty of beans out here for good stand. No worries about replant or anything like that. Um, but they don't look great. I mean, they're just they're small. Look at that, we got a bean beetle right there. Eating my beans. I don't like that. Ah, you can see this feeding, these holes here. These cotyledons are turning yellow and burning up. It's moisture stress. This is a field. It's not the field that we have irrigated in the past when it's corn, but it is a potentially irrigatable field. The river runs right along the back end of this field. There's a spot back over there where we have watered here before. We have irrigated this field. Um, there's 108 acres or so here that uh, it's not a bad option. I am really, really hesitant to water beans early. Similar things here. So you can see when we get down really deep, the soil is still moist but crumbly. It's not wet there's not any excessive moisture in there almost enough to make it stick to my hands almost but that's from really deep <clears throat> so i'm digging this one up just to see what we got you can see we had a plant here that just wasn't going to make it they kind of push through as far as they can and then the stem gets bigger and bigger and bigger until it breaks off which that one had um, but i'm trying to see what we've got for root system on this one good plant how deep are those roots? Are they getting into this lower moisture? Can we hold off for another week? Because the next chance of rain is on Sunday and Monday, a week out. Yeah, we We're definitely breaking roots off here. No, I don't need a flashlight right now. I found one in the okay. There are roots, and they are in some moisture. It works. See? This, oh, yeah. Okay, we got it. Hold on. I'm trying to break it apart. Daddy. It's hard. Look, you broke it. Yeah, I know. Is that okay? Yeah. It's a good seed. Yeah. It's not going to grow again. Yeah, we, we broke almost all of the roots off of this plant. But what we can see is our root nodules. Look at that. That looks fantastic on that side of it. So those little nodules, little cyst-like things on those roots, um, those are from our soybean inoculant that we put on that uh, Brady rhizobia. It's the bacteria that makes those nodules and um, they fix atmospheric nitrogen, kind of feed it right into the soybean roots. The soybeans supply them with sugars, moisture, when the soybeans can get moisture. Um, but so we like to see those. We like to see big ones like this one right here And we like to see them close to the main stem, which those are on the main stem when I break it in half It should have a reddish pinkish color, which it did. I don't know how well you can see that but those are active nodules That looks fantastic. That makes me happy the Question is is there enough moisture here that we shouldn't break out the irrigation gun? So the problem with watering beans is that then they, especially early, in the vegetative stages, they just grow bigger, taller plants. And you don't have to have big, tall plants. What we need is nodes and different, you know, places for the pods and flowers to set from. 
It is generally a big no-no to water beans before they are flowering and setting pods. Once they are flowering and setting pods, you can't put enough water on. You don't ever turn your irrigation off. You just let it run. Um, but most places, in research that you'll read, which mostly comes from out west in Nebraska and stuff, will say there's almost never a case to irrigate beans in June or in the early vegetative stages. That's where we're at. All we have to do is get to the end of July or middle of July when we can get some rain with good viable plants. We still have that. I'm heavily leaning towards not irrigating beans right now. The river's still flowing. We're going up to check on our field that we irrigated last year. We have a stump floated in. So we know if we wanted to pump water, there's water to pump. Our, that river is spring fed and will never actually dry up. It doesn't matter how dry we get here. Now this is the field that we actually irrigated the corn in last year. Um, we're kind of sitting in our center path and one of our irrigation lanes right here. Um, these beans, they look really good. I mean, yeah, I'm really happy with these. All right, so let's see. Our cotyledons are burning up. I don't like that. And then we got our two unifoliate leaves. And then here's our first trifoliate. Here's our second trifoliate. Here's our third one that's just starting to expand. These would be V2, almost a V3 soybeans. That's really good. There's a bean beetle in there, too. Little bastards. Huh. Um, but they look good. We just need some rain. See, that's the thing. I could irrigate this. You found one that was missing? Yep, you did. That's okay. That's okay. Why? Well, the ones next to it will make up for it. Found a skip. We was trying to figure out what happened. Um, yeah, man. It's really hard to not set the pipe up and water these beans that I think would benefit from it, but I know better. I know better. I think I know better. All right, well, we got back to the farm here. Um, all right, they launched Brock. Got him on their concrete, and uh, we're not done with this, but we had that oil leak. It made the bar really dirty. And so he uh, wanted to wash some of that dirt off. This is a good idea. Uh, I wanted to just do a little bit of maintenance on this today. Um, like that beaver tail right there that's getting more worn because it's right behind a track. Move it. So maybe here where this one's not as worn. Just to try and keep those ones doing as best job sealing as we can. Uh, we're going to hold off on any more anhydrous for a while yet. Because it's the late corn that just doesn't need it yet and it's, it's dry, we need some rain. So we're kind of waiting on rain before we do any more nitrogen on corn. There's just no reason to put it out there right now. All right, we are gonna let him work. I gave him some instructions. That needs to get put inside today because we aren't gonna use it for a while. We're not gonna have any re bean replants. So the only thing left is potential double crop and it's gonna have to rain if we are gonna double crop any beans. We do have another uh, late summer project over here that got delivered last week. This bin here was put up in 1998, I believe. The floor in it, the drying floor, is um, in pretty bad shape, has been for a number of years. So we have a new one. New unload, 10 inch unload, new aeration floor, stands, all the stuff. So at some point this summer, we get to put a new floor in a bin, which will be super fun. I don't think it'll be too bad of a project, but yeah, so that stuff is all there. Uh, I'm going to go do some mowing here. We got a few places that I would like to knock down, and we want to take this mower down to Berkey to mow some stuff down there before the uh, beans get too big. And we need the loader tractor down there to lift the steel up that we got to put on the roof for our barn down to Berkey where I'm putting the roof on. So we're going to do some mowing. We've got some uh, paths, trails through our woods back here that, uh, well, they've got tile mains running through them, so that's why they're cleared off. But we like to keep them mowed down for riding gators through and picking raspberries and such. 
and so I'm mowing some of that down. We got some roadsides we're gonna do, go do. Um, I hear I have a very upset child at home that's mad that I left him there, so we're gonna have to go pick him up. What's up? You mad at me? No. Oh, that's good. What you got? Jolly Ranchers. Jolly Ranchers? Oh. We gotta do some mowing. Gonna ride? Okay. And while we're mowing, we're gonna do some roadsides here, so. We like to mow our roadsides along some of our fields, the county or the townships. Ohio does better than Michigan. We are in Ohio here. You can see they, they did a pass along the side, but it just looks nice. Keeps everybody happy to have them mowed down. So we try and do that on everything. Um, this field here is the one where we side dressed the other day. You see that big dead spot right there? That's where our hydraulic hose blew. There's nothing there now. So, this corn doesn't look great. It needs a drink, you can see. Um, can you see that yellowing on the leaves, the edges? That's burned from the anhydrous. You just, when you're dry, it really um, complicates, or not complicates, it just, it makes all of the negatives show up much more severely. The unevenness, the yellow, the planted too wet conditions, that kind of stuff, and you can see it. Ugh, this is one of our best fields and it still looks like crap too. Just too dry, especially on the high ground and uneven. I mean, out in the field it doesn't look terrible. There is a creek here. This one's not the same river that we irrigate out of. I don't think there's enough water in that for us to actually irrigate from. I don't know. Maybe there is. Almost be worth a shot. Set the pump up. Make a few pulls out here. Dig a big hole with the water flow into it and see what happens. Ugh. Oh, I don't know. All right. No. We got enough mowing done. We found something along the side of the road. What did we find, Ryland? We found a magnet. What's on it? Kenfeld Group, you lost a magnet laying along the side of the road. I found it. If you guys want it back, Ryland's going to put it on our grain bin, he said. Now you come find me. I'll give it to you. Yeah! Kenfeld is the, the dealer from Ohio that we work with occasionally, Georgia, not the dealer Georgia. from Michigan that we work with normally. But whatever. They're welcome to come and get it. They are the ones within our TK base on our grain system. So, you know, they're here occasionally. We'll put it where they'll see it. What? Tell them what? They can, can they have it back? Yeah. But what do you want? You got, they gotta give me a toy with, that was zero dollars to get this pack. <laughs> Negotiating skills. He says, tell them they can have it back, but I want another to toy tractor. You still gotta give it to me for free. Give it to them for free. There you go. There you go, Kenfeld Group. All right. Um, something that I've been wanting to do and finally feel like I have a chance to do, whether it's what I should be doing or not, I don't know, but um, some of my field boundaries are off. We need to remap them. So we've got GPS equipment, RTK receiver up there, and we're going to go um, make some new boundary maps. This field out here is where we're going to start because I know it's bad. And the idea here is we're going to, we've still got our spacers in on our tires so we can straddle two rows of corn. And we are going to straddle the outside two rows, make our offset for our boundary so that it is right on the outside of this tire. You need to measure and um, make some more accurate boundaries. And I'll show you why this is important when we get over there. Okay, so I measured, and from our center of our GPS receiver, the center of the gator, to the edge of our tire, it's actually about 32 inches, but we're gonna go 36. We're gonna say three feet, so um, we are offset point from the GPS. Sorry, that's all like that, but whatever. Uh, we've got the field that we're in, boundary offset, three feet, so there. So now we're gonna drive around, we're gonna keep these rows in between, and it's gonna make our boundary. Man, that's plenty far. Maybe I don't wanna go that far. Maybe we're just gonna go 32 inches. I don't know. I don't want it too far outside, but I want it far enough outside that it's never, that they will never plant outside of that. You know what I mean? I know what I mean. We're gonna go 32 inches. 
So right here is why we are remapping this. See how we got a row that just stops right there? And there's another one, and I think there's even another one. My old boundary cut off there, and when the planter got inside the boundary, it shut off. I don't want that. And so now we're driving where the actual boundary should be so that it doesn't shut off our outside rows. And then we won't have this the next time. See here they planted, and then the boundary kind of cut through a little more straight there. We want the boundary out farther. It is not impossible to set the planter up so that it doesn't do that, but this was the first field with a new planter and I missed a setting and I didn't realize it and so um, I am taking corrective action this way in addition to fixing it by telling the planter don't shut off with exterior boundaries, um, and, but this, this is what needs to happen anyway and I've got time to do it right now so we're going to do it. We're right back where we started. Shape looks about the same. I don't know what the acres was on the original one, but there's 52.18 in there now, it says. So uh, that one is so good. We're going to go do another field? We're going to go do another field. Here's another one where my boundary shut the planter off. This was also a very early planted field, and I couldn't figure out what was going on. Um, this is a filter strip. There's still a filter strip here. It is no longer a filter strip in a government program. And so we made it a little smaller this year. We, we took some more of it back to field, and that's why we need a new boundary here. At least the plan was to put more of it into field, and then I ran the planter through here and nothing planted because it was outside of my boundary and I didn't know it was shutting it off. We are doing a little irrigating. Sweet corn patch. I planted some more the other day, and it ain't going to grow until we water it, so we're watering it. All right, we got half a dozen fields or so mapped. We're gonna be done. Do new gators have MGTs on them where it wirelessly transfers data? I don't have that on this. And one of them nice new ones with air conditioning. Auto track would be really nice. It's also 40,000 plus and we aren't gonna spend that kind of money on a gator, that's outrageous. Okay, it's almost done. I'm going to go stick the USB stick in the computer, and we've got some new boundaries. I've got a lot more to do, but one step at a time. All right, well, we're going to wrap this one up, so thanks for watching today. Not a super exciting day. Um, I, am, I am optimistic because the root system, and there is a little moisture in the soil yet, and our crops, from that standpoint, are okay. I am a little discouraged on how things look above ground. Even this late planted corn is starting to look sort of yellow and it's more even than the early planted corn, but it doesn't look good either. Um, there's no rain in the forecast this week, so it's not gonna get better anytime soon. But we'll see, it's still early. We got a long ways to go. I'd hate to give up now. But this is the worst our crop has looked at this point since 2019 when we had just planted like or hadn't planted yet. 2019, we didn't plant anything until June 4th. That was yesterday. So we got to be better off than that. But it's not looking great. So anyway, like and subscribe. Questions and comments, leave them down below. Um, grab yourself a Borderview Farms t-shirt. I might need that income this year. That might be the only way I survive. My crops don't grow anything. Okay, that's not true. But you get the point. Anyway, <laughs> thank you. We'll see you tomorrow.